crucial to appreciate that water is the resource of all humanity. It is a unique factor of production. There is no substitute to water, there is no alternative to water. Water crises in terms of drought, floods and pollution are a major threat to business and society. Globally there are estimated to be over 700 million people without improved drinking water supplies. Addressing water issues means you're addressing inequality, means you're addressing issues of social values, you're addressing politics. Looking forward over the 21st century, we will face more instances of conflict over water use. Unless business, government and society take action to provide for this infrastructure. Corporate water risk is the risk that companies face in their ability to deliver business as usual, operating in water-stressed environments. But it's also about going from being eco-efficient to changing the technology itself that relies on water over the very long term. And so the challenge that we find ourselves engaging with predominantly now is how do companies work with other stakeholders, including regulators and government, to ensure not just that supply is available, that infrastructure is sufficient, but the mechanisms of sharing and distribution are equitable and palatable to the communities in which the companies operate. Owning water is not quite the same as managing water for the collective good. As these crises emerge, I think incredibly interesting solutions are starting to come to the fore. And this is the opportunity, I think, for many young researchers coming into this area to see that these risks are, in fact, opportunities. From an academic point of view, we have ideas that need empirical validation. Some of the major obstacles to conducting research around water, particularly in the areas I work within, is collecting data reliably and robustly in the field. Some of the things coming out of the research uh, include uh, improved uh, management of uh, access to water through smart hand pumps, which is a new concept that uh, was introduced by uh, Oxford University. One third of the hand pumps in Sub-Saharan Africa are broken at any given time. So with our smart hand pump project, we tried to address this challenge by um, finding solutions on three levels the operational level, the financial and the institutional level. People need to drink each and every day and if it takes weeks to get these things repaired, they go to alternative sources which are often dirty and more distant and then they don't really want to pay to fix their hand pump. What we've designed here is a device that fits inside the handle of a hand pump. It measures the movement of the handle, turns that into a measure of how much water is being abstracted from the aquifer and then that's transmitted by SMS um, to a central database, which means we can monitor usage and more importantly, breakdowns of the pumps. One of the big challenges is really to develop a maintenance service provider model that is geared to rural water user preferences, so they will really take it up and also pay into such a system. We've been working closely with the water regulator in Kenya from the start, and he appreciates how data we're generating will actually help him do his job better. Sustainability of the projects is fundamental, and this requires different business models, different institutional arrangements for how this can work in the future. This can either work with existing government structures or develop new structures which have to stand on their own two feet. Water is a local issue. Water is used at the point of production uh, and companies tend to look at the country level or at the market level as to what their challenges are. So the issue that we find when we research corporate water risk is at the parent level, at the top level of a company, the challenge is one of disclosure. At the local level, where you're dealing with plants, management and local operations, the challenge is more immediate. Water, of course, is not only important to individual companies, it's important across industry sectors. And of course, investing in water for the future now actually encompasses the finance industry as they invest in infrastructure. 
and investing in infrastructure, of course, is a very long-lived asset. So that companies that rely on water, the investment industry itself as it comes to invest heavily in infrastructure that is water related, now come to see that together they have a big stake in water resources. And of course that's not only an issue in developed economies, but particularly in underdeveloped or developing economies where infrastructure is in massive short supply. Corporate chief executives boards must take more responsibility for the water question. To do so, they must be far more attuned to society's interest in water, as well as their own corporate interest in water, and how that management process takes place. We talk about risk, and we don't often talk about the counterpoint to that, which is return. And what we mean by that is the benefits that companies themselves can leverage. These, these benefits are obviously partly direct, in terms of the, securing access to supply and services, but they are wider than that because in, in providing these infrastructure and solutions, they are helping the communities and societies in which they operate. There are plenty of entrepreneurial opportunities in the, in the water sector in Sub-Saharan Africa and our project specifically has created this opportunity to build a small business um, that scales rural water services away from this community management where every hand pump is left to their own devices and bears the risk to an actual entrepreneurial model. We were able to reduce the time hand pumps are broken from 27 days on average to less than three days. This is an order of magnitude improvement and really increased functionality rates to 98% in our study site. The communities provide insights culturally, socially in terms of how they behave that allows us to better understand what's going to be tractable and what's going to be working. You can see you know, immediate benefits in terms of you know, livelihood, health. We had incredibly positive reaction from communities seeing value in the service that we were providing and um, looking to contribute financially to supporting this process sustainably in the future. We work together in our team with engineers, development economists, modelers, hydrogeologists, statisticians and social scientists such as myself. And um, it's really important that we draw on each other's work um, in order to accomplish um, our goals. It's imperative that business leaders look back to science and say, okay, what can be offered? How do we think creatively about the opportunities that scientists may be able to provide us for our business models? The skills that people entering the space of addressing environmental challenges, be it water, be it food, be it energy, they need three essential skills, critical thinking, communication, and thirdly, how can they come up with outcome-oriented solutions that embrace the long term? It would be wrong to characterize corporate water risk as some new problem that we're belatedly discovering. What's really changed is marginal growth is coming from water-stressed environments. Uh, emerging markets is a very good example of this. Corporations are starting to see that an effective management of water resources may be an investment in the future that will realise upside potential. We want something that can operate at scale, at low cost and be sustained over time. I think the future for corporate water engagement is actually a very exciting future. It is a future about partnership. It's understanding risk and return together. It's leveraging research that is done at universities such as ours and other centres around the world, working with companies to find the solutions that will move us forward. Thank you.